Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through uh, faith, not, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All righty. So last week we we read about Ezra and uh, we saw how Ezra, you know what I'm saying, was trying to get the people together. So he got he got some of the priests, some of the Levites uh, came together and they started to teach the word. But as they start going through the word, some of the men came to him and they admitted they looking like, listen, we got some strange why. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Ezra was like, oh, man, of what sort? They went through all the sorts and a lot of them was Canaanites. There was some Ammonites in there, too, but a lot of them was Canaanite nation. So, you know what I'm saying? Ezra being familiar with the law, he knew he is like, oh, we wasn't supposed to make no covenant, make no uh, agreements with them. So. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Like but um, he's like, yeah, we wasn't supposed to make no agreements with them. So he said, no, nah, let's put them away. Put them away, them <clears throat> and their children. All right? So that's what that's what uh, the fathers did. They ended up putting them away, putting the children away, and putting the uh, women away that they had um, got married to. Um, so now this week, what we're going to do is we're going to read the book of Esther. Right? So let's get let's go ahead and jump right into it. Read the book of Esther. Um, Esther chapter one, verse one. So in the book of Esther, what we kind of are looking forward to or what we're going to see um, is we have in, in a place called Shushan, right? One of the one of the, the cities of Babylon, um, you have a Persian king that takes over. Right. So his title, just like some of the other titles we've been reading about is a Hosseris. Right. He. Got his, he, you know what I'm saying? He got his queen and his queen going to displease him and all that. We're going we gonna to read about that. But what I want y'all to do is I want y'all to pay attention to the decisions that, 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 uh, like this is not a book where we have a prophet that's giving guidance, right? So it's, a lot of the books we have, we have prophets right there giving guidance to people. It's only a few books that we have where there's no prophets, right? The book of judgment, I mean, uh, judgment, the book of judges, right? There's no prophets in the book of judges. Book of judges is just like everybody just trying to, trying to do the best they can, right? Yeah, Deborah, right? So it's probably some prophets in there, but I'm just saying generally in the, in the, in the, in the book of judges, you're seeing events and stories occur where it's not a prophet, a prophet really giving, giving them guidance on what they should do or what's right or what God thinks about the situation. So Esther is similar in that this is just we reading about people, right, that don't necessarily have the direct guidance of, of the most high God through a prophet. And then they're making decisions. Right. And that's what I like about Esther so much, because it it is it, different when you have a prophet that comes to you and he tell you to go that way or go this way. Right. That's a different experience. It's beautiful to see. You know what I'm saying? It's a glorious thing for the most high God to give you that type of guidance. But then I also like to see what what how people are making decisions, right? Great men of God, great women of God are making decisions that's documented in our book when they don't have that direct guidance. Right? When for them it feels like an instinct or it feels like they operating based off of their understanding of the word. Right? When they understanding of what's right based off of the word. Right. For me, it gives us confidence that. Even in these dark times where the most high God doesn't make himself apparent to us as much, right? Where where he hides himself for us from us because of our iniquity, right? He he still guides us through the word. And those that know the word and, and uphold the word, right, they then make a decision. Another thing I want y'all to pay attention to is the difference between what we're gonna see in Mordecai and the difference of what we saw in Daniel and some and some of the other people, or even or even Joseph, right? We're reading about Joseph, right? We just got done reading with Joseph in Genesis, right? 
So look at the difference between a Daniel or a Joseph as they serve at the at the behest of one of the rulers, right? Um, the difference between even Ezra, right? Remember, Ezra gave a lot of honor to the king, right? Even though this king is the person who controls the fate of his, you know what I'm saying, his people. You know what I'm saying? So this this is something that you're going to see a difference with Mordecai, how he serves or how he how he acts in comparison to the others. So this is um this is Esther chapter one. Let's go ahead and start at verse one. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus. This is Ahasuerus which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia over 107 and 127 provinces. <clears throat> That in those days, when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants. The power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces, began before him. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even 180 days, and when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan the palace, both, mm -hmm. unto, both unto great and small, seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace, where were white, green, and blue hangings fastened with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rings and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble. And they gave them drink in vessels of gold, the vessels being diverse one from another, the royal wine in abundance, according to the state of the king, and the drinking was according to the law. None did compel. For right, so they had a law where you couldn't compel a person to drink, right? So he said the drinking was according to the to the to the Persian law, to the Medes and the Persian law, saying nobody compelled. So in other words, nobody was like, Man, come on, go and drink this. Man, drink a little bit of it, boy. Ain't gonna do nothing to you. Put a little hair on your chest. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody compelling you to drink. Every boy, watch what they say. For so the king had appointed to all the officers of his home that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Right? So according to every man's pleasure, if you want to drink a little, then you drink a little. Now you want to drink a lot, you could drink a lot too. So they was having a party, right? And so during the midst of this party, right, the king feeling good. You know, they feeling like, you know what I'm saying? It's my kingdom, celebrating my princes, my rulers. We on top of the world right now. And he is like, where my, uh, where my woman at? Because she having a party too. You know what I'm saying? So his wife, his queen, her name is Vashti, right? So she's having a party with just the women. He's having a party with the men. It's going on for some days, if I'm not mistaken, right? And then at some point, he looking like, Man, bring her on out here. I want to parade her around because she, she was beautiful. So he is like, man, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? I want to show her off. You know what I'm saying? I want her by my side when we walk through. So he called. He sent his servant. He is like, go ahead and, you know what I'm saying? Tell her, come on. He didn't listen. You know what I'm saying? Queen Vashti was like, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't say exactly what you, uh, jump down. Where's it at? Jump down to see what, you know what I'm saying? How, how he asked for her and, you know what I'm saying? See how she responded. I don't think it say how she responded exactly. It just say that she she denied the request, if I'm not, not mistaken. But Queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Right? So the book just say he sent for her, but she refused. You know what I'm saying? So I like to try to imagine, like, why in the world would she have refused? You know what I'm saying? Like, why in the world would... I'm thinking the king probably ain't even called her in. You know what I'm saying? King probably ain't even seen her in, like, 30 days. You know what I'm saying? They probably ain't even been around. She probably in her feeling body. She knows she look good. She probably looking like, man, I'm tied down to this man. He don't even deal with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, he don't even bring me in, bring me out. She threw her party with her homegirl. She's like, why am I going to sit around and be bored around you? As soon as the party over, you're going to send me away, and I ain't even going to see you for whatever because you be so busy. So in my mind, I think she is like, man, I'm about to finish having my fun in my party, and then I'll talk to you when I get time. So she, you know what I'm saying, a little rebellious towards the king. So after that, the king, the king's sitting there, he's looking like, what? Right? Jump on down to where he asked advice of some of his people. What verse is that? And next unto him was Karshina, she Shethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Mirez, Mersina, 
and Mekuk, Mem, Memukan, the seven princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face and which saw the saw the first in the kingdom. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to, to law? Because she has not performed the commandment of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlains. And Memukan answered before the king and the prin princes, Vashti the queen has not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in the provinces of the king Ahasuerus. For this right, so they, they thought process was, uh, king, what you gonna do? You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't about to let her get away with that because they looking like she can't get away with that. Because if she get away with that, my wife's going to think she can do that. And his wife going to think she can do it. And his wife, she didn't just do wrong against you, King. She did wrong about all our wives about to start dishonoring us. She about to lead a wife rebellion. Right? So they wanted to keep the women under control. So now watch this. Keep going. This deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes when it shall be reported. The king of Hosseras commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, we have heard of the deed of the queen. Thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes that it be not altered that Vashti come no more before the king of Hazarus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. Right? So they said, man, go find you a battle. That's what they're trying to tell him. They look like, look, you got to make it public that you done with her, that she can't come, she can't see you no more, and go find somebody that's better than her. Right? So this is how Esther ends up coming into play. Because Esther is also beautiful. Right? Drop dead gorgeous, but don't nobody know she a Hebrew, right? Because Mordecai, he told her, he was like, man, listen, keep that thing on the hush-hush. Don't tell people that you a Hebrew, right? So they start choosing women out of the palace, I mean, out of the uh, town. And they looking like they bring these women together, and they kind of have like a beauty pageant. So they get them all, you know what I'm saying? They get them all prepared. You remember Daniel? When Daniel, he, he was taken captive. Y'all remember we read like in Daniel 1? He was taken captive. He went into Babylon. And one of the things that they had to do with Daniel, they had to kind of, you know what I'm saying, get him cleaned up for a while and start feeding him food. You know what I'm saying? They food. And Daniel was like, mm, nah, you know what I'm saying? Let me go ahead and just eat the pulse. You know what I'm saying? I just want the vegetation. Give me the fruits. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to eat all that extra stuff because I don't eat like y'all. And they was a little nervous because they was like, man, we only got a certain amount of time to get you right for Nebuchadnezzar. And if we bring you in there and you don't look right for Nebuchadnezzar, he's going to be mad at us. So it was like a custom, I think, of the kings to kind of like transform the people into their customs. You know what I'm saying? To eat their food, to smell the way he, they want them to smell. And that's kind of what happened with these women. It was, I don't remember the period of time. Maybe you could scan through and you could see it. It might be in chapter two. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it was for some period of time where they 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 actually like, like, like molding her and getting her ready and bathing her and 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 getting her to smell good and all these different things, but it's a like a period, probably months or a year. You know what I'm saying? Where year. they, huh? I think it was a year. It was a year. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? Like they preparing her to meet King Ahasuerus. So King Ahasuerus go through and he choose them. But look over in chapter two. Find where find where he see uh, Esther. So also. He said, find somebody better than she, right? Um, Yahushua had the same parable about, you know, bidding people to his feast, his supper. That's and the right. people that he invited didn't come. So he was like, that's why the kingdom of heaven is ripped from you and given to, you know, those that are, those that will come. Paraphrasing. Right. Yeah, so, Va so Vashti represents Israel. Mm -hmm. Right. She represents Israel, just like we refuse the most high God. You know what I'm saying? We refuse his son. You know what I'm saying? And the most high God rejected it. That's why we in the position that we in now. Right. E Esther represents Yahushua. All right. Keep going. You so said you looking for what? 
So I'm looking for uh where he first the the king first see Esther. It should be in chapter two, maybe like the middle. Right, because he going he gonna see Esther, you know what I'm saying? And again, Esther is beautiful, nice, you know what I'm saying? So he gonna like what he see and they're gonna get together. But I want I want y'all to kind of see, you know what I'm saying, how how there's a there was a few women, right? I don't I don't remember how many, but there's a few women that um that were chosen. And so it's kind of like a game show, kind of like the game shows where it's like Flavor Love, you know what I'm saying, Flavor of Love or whatever that show was. Where you know, to all the women kind of you know are after this one man and one actually wins in the end, it's kind of like that. And Esther is the one who won in the end. You don't see nothing. Here's when uh no, we can go to fifteen. Verse all right, so this is uh Esther chapter two verse fifteen. Watch what the book says. Now, when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihiel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king, she required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of them that looked upon her. So Esther was taken unto the king Ahasuerus into the house royal in the tenth month, which was in the month Tibet, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women. And she right, so he loved, when he saw her, oh, he loved her above all the women. Watch this. And she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast unto all the princes and his servants, even Esther's feast. And he made a release to the provinces and gave gifts according to the state of the king. And when the virgins were gathered together the second time, then Mordecai sat in the king's gate. Esther had not yet shown her kindred nor her people as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther, Right, so Mordecai told her, don't show your kindred or your people. In other words, don't let people know you from Israel. Don't let people know you from Judah. Don't let people know that you a Hebrew, right? Do not tell them this. So she hasn't told nobody where she's from. Right? She just blended in. People just, you know, let them make their assumptions about where she's from. But she just blended in, going with the flow. Right? So Mordecai is her uh cousin. Right? And they, you know what I'm saying, he's kind of giving her guidance and trying to, you know, trying to guide her to what's what's going on. But he's sitting in the court. So he's near the king's palace. Keep going. Like when, like as when she was brought up with him. In those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Bithan and Teresh, of those which kept the door, were angry and sought to lay hold on King Ahasuerus. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther the queen. Esther said, right, so listen. Mordecai saw two guys. And these two guys is talking. They angry. Mordecai sit at the king's gate. This is his spot. He stay by the king's gate, right? These two guys arguing, fighting, you know what I'm saying? And they mad. They get to run in their mouth. Like, man, I can't believe the king did this, that, and the other to me. Tell him, bro, I'm a killing. You going to do what? How you going to do that? Man, look, all we got to do, such and such, run up here. He never checked this. Man, we can kill him, right? So they putting a plan together. To kill it. Well, guess who overhears it? Mordecai. Right? So Mordecai, he don't, he don't take it to the king. He don't take it to none of the king's officials. He don't take it to nobody else. Guess who he take it to? Let's read it. And the thing was known to Mordecai who told it unto Esther the queen, and Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. Right? So he told Esther, me personally, I like to believe he just talking to his cousin. You know what I'm saying? And she happens to be the queen. You know what I'm saying? So I think he just told her, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, I'm telling you boys out there, no, you should have saw them boy about to get your boy. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to kill him. And queen was like, what? Are you serious? I'm telling the king. And then Esther went on, uh, what did the king do to make those men mad? 
Yeah, no, it don't it don't tell us it don't tell us here uh what he did, what he did to make the meal mad. But you know what I'm saying? Who knows? It could be as simple as jealousy, you know what I'm saying? Or the king could be foul. But we're about to see, like the king is indifferent. We about to see how the king makes some decisions here. He's indifferent to some stuff, some foul stuff. So it's not beyond the king to, you know what I'm saying, to, to do something foul. So who knows if they had a, a a proper grievance or not. Either way, you know what I'm saying, Mordecai told it to Esther. Esther then, as the queen, because remember, he just made the, uh, the king just made her his queen. So everybody knows she queen now. He was like, oh, I'm taking this to my husband. Let's keep going. Watch this. When inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore, they were both hanged on a tree, and it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. So when they say it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king, it means it got documented in a uh, in a history book. Right. So generally in those times, kings would just have a book that they just documented. Or a, 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 a bunch of books where they documented all of their history and with their history, they kind of ca try to capture, you know, what I'm saying all the moments for them that was significant that they want to keep, you know, what I'm saying kind of dealing with people on. Or keep talking to people about. So they document that stuff and their history inside of the books of the Chronicles. That's important because the king, well, you know, further on, he going to get bored and go back and read some of this stuff. Right. So he documented they, they killed the two men that was plotting on him. And then they documented it inside of the Chronicles. Right. Let's keep going. After these things, did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamaditha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him? And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and, and, revered, oh God, and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him, nor did him reverence. Right? So now Mordecai is looking like I'm not bow bowing to this man. Nor am I about to give him reverence. That's just not how Mordecai was. That's why I don't necessarily believe that Mordecai, you know what I'm saying, ran to Esther to tell. You know what I'm saying? I think Mordecai was just talking to his cousin because they came up together. Right? So that's his, you know what I'm saying? That's his, that's his, that's his, that's his road dog. So he told he telling her what's going on. She ended up telling. But then after that, Haman gets promoted and it's probably for security reasons, right? So when you're looking at it, the king, he almost get attacked by two dudes. He find out about it. I don't trust them. Let me get somebody I trust. He promote Haman. It's probably for security, right? Keep going. Watch this. Then the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, why do you transgress the king's commandment? Now it came to pass when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, and they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. And right? So, so it told you, it said Mordecai said the reason why he didn't bow, right, is because he said he was a Jew. He was from Judah. Right. That was his testimony. That's how he they looking at. They asked him the book, say they asked him daily. Like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like, why are you not giving reverence? You know what I'm saying? Like, why are you not bowing down? What are you doing? You know what I'm saying? And Mordecai looking like at first it said he didn't he didn't hearken to him. So I like to believe that and Mordecai just ignoring him like, man, please. you know what I'm saying? And he's chilling by the gate because that's his spot. Right. Then after a while. They they go to Haman. And they go to him and they like, man, the reason he told the only thing he told is because he a Jew. Oh, my goodness. Right. So y'all probably don't remember. There was um, uh, King Saul. Right. King Saul um, went went up against uh, the Malachites. Right. And. Uh, there was a guy named Agag, right? This is this is an Agathite, right? Haman is. 
So likely a descendant of Agag, who was actually a descendant of the Amalekites. And the Amalekites were some of the people that, that attacked us when we were in the wilderness. And we fought with them a few times in our history, a bunch of times in our history. But it's one group of people. The Amalekites, are, they, they come from, they descendants of uh, uh, Seir, I think. I don't think it's Edom. I think they defended descendants of Seir. You know what I'm saying? And the Amalekites is one group of people that the Most High God said, never forget what they did to you. You know what I'm saying? When we done in Job and we get into Exodus in our in our uh in our Bible in a year reading, we'll talk about that on the on the on the fellowship call. But we, you know what I'm saying? This this uh this Haman probably comes with cultural history that does not like our people because the Amalekites and the Hebrews are adversarial to each other, right? So just based off of our history, he probably comes up like where he's racist against us. Like today we would call it racist. You know what I'm saying? Like he probably don't mess with Hebrews at all. Like he an Israelite? He a, he a Jew? He from Judah? Oh, no. You know what I'm saying? So I can imagine that Haman hearing that, why, why don't he bow? Oh, because he a, he a Jew? He from Judah? Oh, no. Oh. So let's see what happens. When Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath, and he thought, to, he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. For they had showed him the people of Mordecai, wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus even the people of Mordecai. In the first month, that is the month Nisan, in the 12th year of the king of Hazarus, they cast Pur, that is Lot, before All right, so day to day. Haman, right, his, his reasoning, so these brother kids, Esau and Jacob. What do you mean, Sister Pam? You talking about the Amalekites? I think the Amalekites is from Seir. So, so, so Esau went into the land that Seir had in Horeb, uh, not, uh, not Horeb, uh, Horim, right? He, he went with the, uh, uh, Seir, Seir gave birth to the, uh, Horathites. I think I, I might be getting that wrong, but the Horathites. So, uh, the Malachites actually, I believe, are descendants of Seir, who is different from Edom. But Edom ended up taking over all of Seir's land later on in history. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, later on uh, after Genesis. You know what I'm saying? So after the book of Genesis, Edom ends up taking over everything from Seir. So Seir gave birth to people who ended up becoming giants. Right? So those are some of the people that became giants. And then Edom ended up going in and killing a lot of those giants and taking over that land. You know, so that's kind of how it plays out. But you look at uh, you look at Haman and because he wasn't given reverence and because he said the reason why is because he's from Judah. Haman decides to take it out on all people from Judah. Right. Because his thought process is their laws are diverse from ours. Like this is one particular people that just got different laws from everybody right so in his mind these are the ones that's gonna cause a problem and that's the exact that's the exact um uh position and reasoning that he gonna give to the king so when Haman talked to the king he gonna explain it to the king just like that like man listen if you want this thing to be rocking and you want this thing to be nice you got to get rid of these people that cause problems in the kingdom right um uh keep keep going so they so oh, hold on hold on so they uh they cast lots. In other words, think of it like rolling a die. So you got one die, right? And think of it as like rolling that one die. And that one die give you something, and based off of what it give you, you make a decision. So that's what they did to figure out what day uh what day and what month are they gonna kill. So imagine rolling a die that got that got 12 sides. You can just say hey. right? Huh? You just say heads or tails. Yeah, I mean, you can say heads or tails. You could just go month by month and say heads or tails. But imagine rolling a die that got 12 sides. You go and you roll it. And then it land on two. It's like, okay, February. You know what I'm saying? And then you got another die 
You know what I'm saying? Maybe you take two dice. You know what I'm saying? And and you roll that, and it hits you on like, you know what I'm saying, 28. Okay, February 28. You know what I'm saying? That's your die. Right? And that's that's kind of, they don't have dice, of course, but that's they have some type of mechanism where by chance things are being selected. So they select in the month and the day that they're going to go out and kill all of the people from Judah. Right? All the people that's in captivity in that area from Judah, they about to try to kill them all. And the, so let, let's keep going. Let's see when he talked to the king. And Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, there's a certain people, people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom. And their Watch laws this. are diverse from all people. Right? He said their laws are different from all people. You can let these people run their mouth today and try to act like, oh, yeah, well, all religions are the same. That is not historically how people thought about this thing. And you can tell, right? You can tell that's not how people, people thought about it because three, three, uh, three of the like top five, the top five religions are based off of our laws, right? It's based off of our book, our Old Testament. So when you think about it like that, it's not, that's not the case because ours is just like everybody else's. That's the case because our stuff is different. And historically, everyone acknowledged that. Right? That's why the, the language that we spoke, notice that that became the bedrock for the majority of languages. For the most popular languages right now, that's the bedrock for it. Right? They teach us the alphabet, right? That comes from the first two letters, Aleph, Bet, right? In Hebrew. And then the Greeks come along, copied off of it, right? And then the Romans came come along and, you know, switched some things up. And then after that, it turns into Latin. And after that, into English and all the different offshoots of English, Spanish and, and French and all these different languages, right? They all got that stuff from us. The seven day week, the whole world is running all these different cultures, all these different calendars. But the whole world is running off of a seven day week that only comes from our book. That is something that's diverse and different from any nation, any religion, anything that they got going on that come from us. A 12, a 12 month calendar, us, all this stuff is us. Right. But these people today will try to pretend like, oh, all religions are the same. That's not how these people thought about it in the past. So you see Haman recognize he's looking like he's telling the king like, man, these people differ, man. They do stuff differently and they diverse from all. Why do you think he's saying that? Right. He's saying that because he's looking at it like, king, if you want peace, if you want to be able to rule, you can't do it with the people of Judah. So now. Rewind a little bit and remember a couple weeks ago, we talked about Ezra. Before Ezra came into the picture, you had Zerubbabel and you had uh, Yahushua, right? You had Joshua. And Zerubbabel and Joshua was trying to build the foundation. And what happened when the Gentiles came? The Gentiles from up north. They came looking down. They looking like, hey, we'll, we'll, we don't mind helping you guys. We can help. And we we flatly looked at them and were like, uh, no, nah, you ain't got nothing to do with them. You know what I'm saying? We're going to build it ourselves. You sit back and look, but you don't have nothing to do with building what we got going on. And so you remember the Gentiles snitched. And if you remember when they snitched, they wrote a letter to the king and they told the king, they said, yo, make a search in the Chronicles and you will see these people cause problems. These people are rebellious and they're insurrectionists against all the different nations. Look at how many nations have problems with these people. And if y'all remember in the book of Ezra, the king looked and he confirmed it. And he was like, hey, what? tell they but stop building and don't start building again until they get my permission. He shut the whole thing down because he looked in the records. He is looking like, yeah, buddy. So we have a we have a reputation. So. Imagine what's going on here. Haman comes up and he say, yeah, the people of Judah, they are a problem. Trust me. He probably working up, working off the same information that uh, that uh, the Gentiles in the book of Ezra was working off of. 
Watch this. Keep going. And their laws are di diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed, and I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of this business to bring it into the king's treasuries. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it to Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the, the Jew's enemy. And the king said unto Haman, the silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seems good unto you. Then were the king's scribes called on the 13th day of the first month, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants and to the governors that were over every province and to the rulers of every people of every province according to the writing thereof and to every people after their language. And the name of King Ahasuerus was it written and sealed with the king's ring. And the right. Lord, so they, they copied it in every language, this letter, and they sent it out to all the provinces. So it's not just locally. They sent it out everywhere in different languages. And look what they about to, I think it tell you. Let's let's look and see if it tell, tell us what it say. And the letters were sent by posts into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women in one day, even upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month Adar, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. The so on God. the 13th day of the 12th month, in the month Adar, they made it so that it was legal for one day, right? So think of y'all, y'all ever heard of the, the movie called The Purge? Think of the purge, except this purge is only directed at Hebrews. So you get a reward. You get paid, right? The king will pay for you to kill these people. Right? And Haman told him, look, it'll be a profit to you. This will actually make you. This is an investment. This will actually make you money. Right? So they set it up that way for on one day. It's a feeding frenzy. Kill the Jews, all of them. Kill, kill the, uh, kill the babies. Kill everybody. They trying to. These are evil people. They were trying to kill all of us, right? They set it up to do that. Evil stuff, right? So watch what happened after this. The post went out, being hastened by the king's commandment, and the decree was given in Shushan. Shushan the palace and the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city Shushan was perplexed. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai ripped his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and cried out loud a, and a bit, with a bitter cry. And came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. In every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was a great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it to her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved and she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Right, so you see, Mordecai couldn't come through the king's gate if he was wearing sackcloth and ashes. That was against the rules. So I like to believe that she sent him clothes like, come over here so I can talk to you. You know what I'm saying? So I can talk to you face to face. Cause this is messed up what I just heard. Right? What she probably looking like, what should I do? You know what I'm saying? He probably, he probably like a big brother to her. You know what I'm saying? Like a father to her. He's like his dad. He uh raised her. Book say yeah. raised her as a daughter. So it's like, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like what should I do? Like what you, you know what I'm saying? This is messed up. So Mordecai messed up about this thing. He's like, no, nah, man, I don't want them clothes, man. We all about to die. You know what I'm saying? But watch what Mordecai say. Listen to the faith in Mordecai. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved. And she sent raiment to Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth, but he received it not. Then called Esther for Hatak, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So Hatak sent forth to Mordecai, even of the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. Mordecai told him all of that had happened unto him and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay the king's treasuries for the Jews to, 
for the Jews to destroy them. Also, he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him and to make requests before him for her people. And Hatak came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Again, Esther spake unto Hatak and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come in unto the king into the inner court who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such as to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come into the king these 30 days. Right? So she's saying, Mordecai, like, man, you got to go talk to your men. Like, this is it. You got to, they about to kill us. You got to go talk to your men. Right? And Esther looking like, man, you already know the law. If I try to present myself to the king without him calling me, I will be put to death. Like he, that, like the only way I'll be out of it is if he hold out the scepter to me and it ain't no guarantee that he'll do that. So Esther like, man, that's foolishness. I got to wait for him to call. But then she slipped in there. The man, I ain't, I ain't been called by the man for 30 days. Right. 30 days. That's a long time. She's looking like I don't know if that'll turn into 45 days. I don't know if that like I don't know if that's enough time before this thing is going to happen in, in, in the month of Adar. Right. And then if you think about it, he ain't he ain't look, he ain't called her in 30 days. That's probably like I was saying, that's probably what happened to Vashti. <laughs> right. Vashti was looking like I'm not dealing with this. You know what I'm saying? So she looking like I'm hanging with the girls. I ain't making you no priority if I can't see you. You know what I'm saying? Where I want to see you. If I, you know what I'm saying? If I got, if I can't even go in, you might have me put to death by coming in the wrong time. He looking like, no. Nah. So the king had, he, you know what I'm saying? The king ran the tight little ship. He didn't even see his wife for 30 days. Just had her out. You know what I'm saying? But Esther sitting around like, mm, I don't know. Right? Let's see what Mordecai say though. Because you remember Esther saying, I can't do that because the king hasn't called me. And if the king don't call me, I might just get put to death, right? So she's looking like that's not a good idea. Watch what Mordecai respond with, though. Listen to the faith of Mordecai. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, think not within thyself that you shall escape if the, in the king's house more than all the Jews. Right? Yeah. He looking like, first of all, you talking like your neck ain't on the line, too. You, th you talking like all the rest of the people of Judah are going to get killed, but you going to be the only one that survived in the king's house. He like, don't think that that's how that, you know, this thing ain't going to play out like that. Watch this. Watch what he say next, though. For Listen you, to it, Faith. For if you all together hold thy peace at this time, then there, sh then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. Right? Mm -hmm. He said, listen, even if you shut your mouth right now, our people going to be saved somehow. Right? His faith didn't go to, it's the hope is gone, it's all over. He's sad about the circumstance. He's stressed out because he don't know how it's going to happen. But he's when he's talking, he's talking like, listen, we going to look. This thing is going to happen one way or another. Right. One way or another is going to happen. However, you know what I'm saying? If you don't participate, your butt going to die. Watch this. Oh, I lost it, brother. Esther bade them return. Hold on, you got to go back. You got we we lost you. So this is uh, you know what I'm saying. He 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 telling her he looking like you, you you probably gonna die. You know what I'm saying? Like we gonna get delivered somehow, some way, some form. A lot of us, maybe a lot of us die, but ultimately we gonna get delivered. Yo, but though, if you don't step up, you gonna mess around and die. Watch what he say. And who knows whether you are come to the kingdom for such a time as this. He asked, he said, who knows if this is the very reason that you became queen? He looking at it like, you don't think it's crazy that you became king of all the nations? I mean, queen of all the nations. He looking like, you a Hebrew. We in, ca you, we in captivity. I told you don't even tell nobody who you are because I know they wouldn't have treated you the same if they knew you as a Hebrew, right? And you mean to tell me you think, you think that just happened just because? He looking like this might be the reason why you here. Right? The most high God might have put my bad. Most high God might have put you here specifically 
for this reason. So he says, such a time as this. Watch this. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me. And neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Keep going, watch this. Right? So Esther ready to do it. She looking like, all right, all right, for sure. Because she respect Mordecai. So when he told her that, she looking like, all right, all right, for sure. All right, everybody fast. Y'all get to praying. I'm going to do it. And if I die, I'm just going to die. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to do it. Just like you said, I'm going to do it. Right? So watch how she approach this thing. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so when the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out, the, held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. And the mm -hmm. king said unto her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther? What wilt thou, Queen Esther? And in other words, you, what you want, baby? You know what I'm saying? That was what you want, baby? He held out the scepter to her. You know what I'm saying? She walked in. And he was like, oh, that girl, fine. I forgot. He probably forgot. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that girl, fine. He held out that scepter to her like that. He's like, you know what I'm saying? What can I do for you, baby? Watch this. And what is thy request? It shall be given thee to the half of the kingdom. Big trick. You know what I'm saying? Big trick. That boy is looking like, what you need? What can I do for you? You can get it up to half of my kingdom. I'll give it to you, girl. Come here. You know what I'm saying? What you want? You know what I'm saying? Then she walk over. Watch this. This boy, a big trick. Watch this. And Esther answered, if it seem good unto the king, let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. Then the king said, cause Haman to make haste that he may do as Esther has said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. And the king said unto Esther at the banquet of wine, what is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? Even a half of the kingdom if it shall be performed. Now, we don't even know. You know what I'm saying? The king was mighty excited about him and Haman getting invited. To Esther's, you know what I'm saying? So the king might have thought it was one of them, you know what I'm saying, P. Diddy freak offs. You know what I'm saying, boy? Hey, he might have, he might have thought he was getting into something right now. Because the king, like, all right, listen, let's go, Haman. Call that boy, let's go. They all excited. So Haman, you about to see Haman is super excited too, because it's an honor. He looking like, wait, the queen invited just me and the king, nobody else, to the banquet, to this dinner? He looking at, oh, that's an honor. Like, because remember, Haman thinking about resume, right? He thinking about like, I could be king one day. Like, I can rule one of these things. Like, I can be the man. I can increase my riches. Haman already got money. He paying. Haman is investing for the king for all. He paying for everybody to murder our people, right? So he paying for it. He putting it together. Like, man, don't worry about. I give you the ten. I'll give you the 10 right now. You know what I'm saying? I'll put it in your coffers. That You use that to pay everybody who's going to do this. This is, And he told the king before, he said, listen, it won't profit you having them around. So in other words, not having them around will profit you. So in other words, he's telling them, I'm putting this money in. You ain't got to pay nothing. And it's going to pay dividends for you. Right? But Haman probably thinking about himself. He's just thinking about how he can advance, how he can grow. Right? So he looking at this situation like, oh, this is it. This is it. It's me. It's the king. And it's his wife. What an honor. Can't nobody say that they got this opportunity. Right? Watch this. Then answered Esther and said, my petition and my request is, if I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it pleased the king to grant my petition and to perform my request, let the king and Haman Come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will and I will do tomorrow as the king has said. Then when Haman forth that day joyful and with a glad heart, but when Haman saw Mordecai on the king's gate, that he stood not up nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself, and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends and, Je and Zeresh, his wife. And Haman told them of the glory of his riches and the multitude of his children. 
and all the things wherein the king had promoted him and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Haman said, moreover, yea, Esther the queen did let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared but myself. And tomorrow I am invited unto her also with the king. Yet all this avails me nothing so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Then right, so he don't like seeing Mordecai because Mordecai, like, don't give him the honor that he feel like he get, he deserves. So he, he he be looking at Mordecai and he be making him mad. So on his way home, he leaving and he see Mordecai and he want to do something to him. But the book say he refrained. He looking like, you know what? I had a good day today. You know what I'm saying? I had a good day. I ain't even about to start no drama. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to go to the banquet. I'm the only one invited. You got lucky. But boy, I got to get your butt. So it's festering on him because he got all this good news. He got the king's ring. The king let him, you know what I'm saying, about to let him do this plan to kill all the people of Judah. All this stuff is working out for him, right? But then he see Mordecai, that thing, get under his skin. So he go home to his family, and he telling them about everything. Like, nah, man, look. No, he gave me the ring. No, he put me over all the princes. Like, I'm the man right now. Like, I might have a chance of becoming king. You know what I'm saying? Like, I am the man right now. You know what I'm saying? Can you believe it? Look, but I'm going to tell you the truth. That boy Mordecai still out there, and he still ain't showing no darn love. I can't never be happy until that man gone, right? So he still want to kill him. What'd you say? He said, "Not a Diddy party." <laughs> he feels like he's in there. Yeah, he want to make it. Yeah, for sure, right? He want to make it to the party. It might be. You know what I'm saying? It might. We don't got enough detail. It might have been. You know what I'm saying? They might have thought they was about to have a little freak off. Ain't it wild how they do Diddy though? Diddy part. If you look at the lawsuit and all the stuff they got for Diddy, if you look at what you know, what I'm saying what they saying about him, how is that thing any different from what we already know and popularize about a Hugh Hefner party? And the Hugh Hefner, he did his and sold his on on tapes for everybody to see. Ain't nobody kicking no door doors for him. Ain't nobody put his kids in handcuffs on national TV. How you have a raid on national TV? How you got a, how you got a raid in all the news stations just right there waiting for it as it happens? Helicopters in the in the sky for a raid, a, a a a news helicopter in the sky filming a raid. When you ever seen that? Unless it was phony. Try to set these people up. How you busting the man house? And he still walk. You kick in his doors. Ain't nobody arrested. What you take from his house? What you were looking for? You know what they say, right? They had, you know what I'm saying? We all thought, we thought Diddy was on the run. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you said they tracking his jet. How you start tracking the man jet? You got common people tracking the man jet. Who started that? We wasn't tracking his jet the day before we got raided. All of a sudden, we got regular people on Facebook and Twitter posting about his jet being tracked. Who gave us to track it? You got to ask some questions because these people played dirty games they be playing dirty dirty nasty little games but you know what they say at first we thought he was on the plane running away flying out to barbados or wherever he flew he flew you know what i'm saying the thing the plane flew somewhere you know what i'm saying somewhere out of country they look like oh he flew somewhere that they don't have extradition rights because you know if there's certain places if you go there the country itself will lock your butt up and send you right back to america right but then there are certain places where the country don't, they ain't got that agreement with the U.S. So it's just like, nah, man, you know what I'm saying? They can come here, they can leave here. They ain't none of our business. We ain't messing with it, right? But what they say is he got tapes of everybody who came to his house and everybody who participated in whatever they participated with. He got tapes, secret little tapes, because he has secret cameras all over the house, they say. And so when they found that out, when that thing was written in one of the lawsuits that they, that they have, they say that people start getting a little nervous. You know what I'm saying? Because they say maybe it's some politicians and some high-level executives on them lists that was messing around with the Diddy parties, right? And they say well, some of these people are a little too powerful to be going down. So when they found out about the secret, the secret tapes and they saw that written inside of the, the lawsuit, they say some things had to happen. And they say that maybe P. Diddy had all the evidence that he wanted to keep and had it flew out before they raided the house. And they went in to raid the house to get as much evidence as possible. Because it's like, why else would you kick somebody's door in 
and you don't even you don't even feel like you need to arrest them. That's interesting to me. Like I'm just kicking the door. So you kicked in the door. This the feds. The feds think they got enough evidence to kick in the door, but they don't think they got enough evidence to arrest you. They think they got enough evidence to make you a public spectacle and do all that, but they don't feel like they got enough evidence. You outside, you in, you in Miami walking around to this day, you tweeting and doing all this regular stuff is still in America. Ain't went nowhere. No, he wasn't on the plane. Right? Ain't on the run, posting videos, making a mockery of it. He put he posted the video of uh, uh, him and Biggie. Uh, what's that song? I think it's on the run or something like that, right? <laughs> right? So you look at it, and somebody playing dirty games, and somebody got to figure out how this stuff play out. But I just know it seemed like, you know what I'm saying, we skip over Hugh Hefner, right? We still, we still ain't got nobody that came forward from from uh in a credible way came forward from the the epstein stuff but somehow the black people seem to get latched on and attacked for foolishness every single time right and it's a big deal every time it happens i just think it's interesting you know what i'm saying but anyways you know what I'm saying? let's get back to it we in shushan the palace and that well hold on, what you say let me make it done. OJ, oh, don't get me started on OJ. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, OJ died. Yeah, crazy. You know what I'm saying? They say he died of cancer. You know what I'm saying? And 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 now you got people, just ignorant people, talking about, you know what I'm saying? Some of them joking around like he beat the murder. And You know what I'm saying? Other, uh, I mean, uh, a lot, all of them, right? All the ones I'm talking about right now uh, talk about he beat the murder. Some of them joke about it, and some of them are like, angry that he beat a murder but it's like are y'all crazy you know what i'm saying like are y'all crazy did y'all did y'all actually watch any like just watch it's one some of these some of these documentaries and some of these shows they don't tell you the whole story but it was one of them documentaries that i watched they went into the whole thing and they were talking about the thing that got me when i was done with it when they were showing you how the police the police got caught in the trial planting evidence manipulating the evidence to try to get him that's why he got off like it's not there's not a c i don't even know why nobody even talk about that like it's not the man got off because they planted evidence and they manipulated evidence to try to bust him right and now everybody mad at him because he was made to you know try to be some type of fall guy you know what i'm saying for this young lady getting brutally killed he got brutally killed too that thing was nasty Right, whoever did that to her, that thing was foul, right? But my man got found not guilty, and y'all, a black man with a white woman, got found not guilty, and y'all think he beat it? What's wrong with y'all? Like, when did that happen? Like, he could have, he could have not done it and went went to jail. He beat the case, and they still had to send it. They they still found a way to send him to jail for it. What do you think a black man is getting away with? I don't care how white he act. <laughs> Thing ain't darn happen. They was mad that they they was mad that the police was so sloppy that they had to let him go and they had to try to get him on something else. People just you know what I'm saying. Y'all just repeat stuff and read memes all day. Believe everything you darn see on the internet. Like this stuff ain't work. Man, these people lie to y'all. They lie to us. Everything is a lie. Like everything y'all looking at is a lie. This stuff be untrue. They be giving you little little bits of truth. All this stuff is lie. You can't trust none of these people. You got everything you look at. You got you know what I'm saying. Take it with a grain of salt. Check into it a few different ways. These lies are so complicated now. You can't even check into them. I kid you not. It's some stuff. I be trying to get to the bottom of some of this stuff. I be looking like man. I don't even have enough time. All right. These people big lie. But keep going. Let me see what else we got. Then says Zeresh, his wife, and all the friends unto him, let a gallows be made of 50 cubits high, and tomorrow speak thou unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go thou in merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made. So Haman felt good about that. He put some gallows up. He wanted to. He wanted to hang. Uh, he wanted to hang Mordecai on him. 
You know what I'm saying? So it fell. He was like, you know, that's a good idea. Let's go ahead and do it. Now he's about to go to the banquet. Watch this. On that night, could not the king sleep? And he commanded to bring the book of records of the Chronicles, and they were read before the king. And now, were... what are the chances, right? The, the king waiting for the free call, because that's how it be, right? You got, listen, I remember back a long time ago, back in the day, right? You know what I'm saying? You get that one that you ready, you know what I'm saying? You get that text message, and be like, yeah, okay, we could do it tomorrow. And it's like, you be up all night waiting for tomorrow to come. Can't sleep. Like, man, I can't wait to get to it. That was the king is doing. King can't sleep. He looking like, man, I can't wait for the banquet. It's about to go down. You know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, he like, I got to go to sleep. So he said, bring me the Chronicles. So remember, we talked about the Chronicles before. The Chronicles is telling you all the history, all the significant events that the kings and the officials wanted to document, right? So he like, man, go ahead and read that boring stuff to me. It always puts me to sleep. Every single time that thing put me to sleep, right? So the king say, bring it in to him and read it to him. Watch what happens. What are the chances the night before the banquet where Haman was about to have the honor of his life? What are the chances that the king wants the chronicle to be read to him? Goodness gracious. Watch this. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Victana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlain, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on King Ahasuerus. And the king said, what honor and dignity has been done for Mordecai for this? Then right? So, so the king, he was like, oh, I forgot all about that. That was good looking. That boy really did try to kill me. That's why I ended up promoting Haman. Uh, I gave Haman the spot because, you know, that's my man's. But what did we do for uh what did we do for Mordecai for, for telling us about all this stuff? Because remember, Mordecai told Esther, Esther told the king, like, yo, this is what Mordecai told me. And the king looking like, did we do anything for him for that? I forgot all about that. Them scoundrels try to get that's why we killed them boy. But what we do, uh, what we do for the for the Hebrew boy, right? And then watch what they say. The king said, What honor and dignity has been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's decal. Then said the king, oh my bad. And then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, there is nothing done for him. And the king said, who is in the court? Now Haman was coming to the outward court of the king's house to speak. Right. About so Haman just happened to be walking in at this point. Right. They said, no, nah, nothing. We didn't do nothing for Mordecai. You know what I'm saying? So the, the king probably hears somebody walking in the court. He's like, who out there? They're like, oh, uh, that's, uh, that's Haman. Watch what he say. And Haman was coming to the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. And right? So now Haman, he got this whole plan. I'm about to take Mordecai. I'm about to put him on these gallows. That weasel. You know what I'm saying? That darn man of Judah. He feel like he don't have to he don't have to bow or show no reverence to me. What's wrong with him? Right? Mad about it. So he know he got it in good with the king. He got the highest honor. He the only one going to the king's wife's banquet. Right? This thing is like, it's like nobody is on his level right now. So he just confident walking into the king. I'm about to just ask the king, can I hang Mordecai out there? What are the chances that the king in his boredom just got read the chronicles and he's considering what is being done for Mordecai for the good that he's done to the king. Right? Haman haven't put this together. Haman might not even know that Mordecai is the one who told. Because remember, Mordecai told Esther and Esther told the king. Right? So watch this. So Haman came in and the king said unto him, what shall be done unto the man whom the king delights to honor? Now, when Haman hears this, imagine from his point of view. Haman just got done bragging to his family like, man, listen, king gave me his ring. He put me above all of the different rulers, right? And on top of that, his wife invited me and only me other than the king to the banquet. Do y'all know how big of a deal this is? Y'all see all this money? It said he is bragging about his riches. All this money I got, all this, you know what I'm saying? 
So he out there. He looking like, you know what I'm saying? He probably got on the rapper change. He like, boy, you don't see me out here shining, boy. What's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? So he bragging to his family, right? His mindset is, I'm the man right now. He walks in there. He about to tell more. He about to tell uh, the king that Mordecai got to go. And the king, first thing he said to him was like, hey, what should the king do for a man that deserves honor from the king? And watch what Mordecai thinking this up. Haman. I mean, uh, sorry, watch what Haman thought to this up. Now, Haman thought in his heart, to whom would the king delight to honor more than myself? <laughs> right. <there. laughs> Haman's in there like, oh, he talking about me. Because, I mean, who else? You know what I'm saying? Who else shining like this? You know what I'm saying? Who else deserve honor from the king more than me? You know what I'm saying? We get it in together. Right? So watch this. Haman answered the king, for the man whom the king delights to honor, let the royal apparel be brought which the king uses to wear, and the horse that the king rides upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head. And let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of the one of the king's most noble princes, that they may array the man with all whom the king delights to honor and bring him on horseback through the street of the city. And proclaim right. before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. Right? So you can tell Haman likes the glory. Right, he's into that. Right, I want the glory. He wanted to brag to his family, all that. He, he's, he's upset. He, it gets to him that Mordecai don't bow to him. Right, so he needs that glory. He needs that praise. You know what I'm saying? He's, it, it really bothers him that he's not getting it from Mordecai. So when he thought about what the king asked him, he's looking like, listen, this is what you should do, because he thinks the king is asking him, but really talking about him. But not letting, he think the king is just like not letting him in. Like, hey, I got a surprise for you, but I don't want to tell you. So what would you say a king should do for somebody that he thinking, oh, you, you about to do it for me. So let me give you, let me tell you what you should do. Oh, you give me the royal clothes. You know what I'm saying? Give me all the jewelry. Put me on top of your steed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Walk me through all the, you know what I'm saying? Bring your most prestigious ruler to guide me out. And tell all the people to bow down to me. Right? In his mind, he's looking like, oh, my goodness. This has been the best month of my life. That's kind of how he's looking at it. But watch this. Then the king said to Haman, make haste and take the apparel and the horse, as thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew that sits at the king's gate. Let nothing fail of all that you have spoken. Just then imagine how heartbroken. Haman had to feel in that moment. Remember, Haman walked in there trying to get Mordecai killed. He was just about to ask permission to put Mordecai on the gallows and hang that butt. Right? Then, it's just like, just imagine the mood swing, right? It start off with anger and vitriol like this darn Mordecai. I gotta walk. I leave, I walk past him. The man don't give me reverence. I'm heated. But I'm happy because I got invited to the banquet. I come back in preparation for the banquet. I probably pass him again. And I'm like, man, I'm about to have this boy killed. I walk in there, got my plan together. I'm about to talk to my man, the king. I'm about to tell him exactly how I want this thing to happen. And I'm already knowing he's going to get, but he stopped me. And then he asked me, I'm mad right now. But then he asked me, what should he do for me? That's how he heard it, right? What should the king do for me? Right. Then after that, he happy. So he went from happy to mad to happy to mad to happy again. Right. And now he looking like, yeah. And then all of a sudden the king say, OK, everything you said, do it to Mordecai and don't let a thing fail. Oh, that had to be crushing. That had to be like, are you kidding me? This man don't show no reverence to me. Don't bow down to me at all. But you telling me I got to show reverence to him and parade him and from all of the people, I have to be the one to do it? You have to be freaking kidding me. Right? But he can't tell the king no. So watch this. Then took him in the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaimed before him, thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delights to honor. 
And Mordecai came again to the king's gate, but Haman hasted to his house mourning and having his head covered. And Haman told Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends everything that had befallen him. Then said his wise men to Zeresh, his wise men, and Zeresh, his wife, unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews before whom you have begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but shall surely fall before him. And while they were yet talking with him, came the king's chamberlains and hasted to bring Haman unto the banquet that Esther had prepared. Right? So he looked like, uh, uh, Haman, you're late. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go. Right? So, you know what I'm saying? They just told him, they like, uh, it looked like you about to lose to Mordecai. Right? It looked like the thing is not about to go, to, go your way. Because they, they reading the king. They like, listen, I know the king agreed that you could go kill all the people of Judah. But he just gave honor in front of everybody to a known man of Judah. So they just kind of looking at it like putting two, two, like these two don't go like these two things don't go together. It's not looking good for your plan. Mordecai, I mean, uh, Haman, he looking at him like what? And then all of a sudden the Chamberlain come. You, you, you have to get to the banquet. You have to get to the banquet. So here goes another mood swing. Just. Imagine everything that's on Haman's mind right now, right? I need the prestige. I need all these things. Like, I need the praise. Like, this is my validation. This is what I've been waiting for my whole life. I've been pushing and fighting to make it to the top. I've been doing all these things. Everybody always played me through all my whole life. You know what I'm saying? Everybody always count me out. I'm finally getting the respect I deserve. I'm finally, you know what I'm saying, getting recognized for the stuff I do. In his mind, this is it. And it's like right here crumbling apart. And I just got humiliated by having to walk this dark scoundrel, this scoundrel from Judah, walk him around and show him praise, the praise that I really deserve. Right? Okay, and now I'm late to this banquet. Oh, yeah, the banquet. But you know what? I'm the only one invited to this banquet. Right? Ain't no Mordecai invited to that bank banquet. It's me. Right? Let's go. So let's see what he do. So the king and Haman came to the banquet with Esther the queen, and the king said again unto Esther on the second day of the banquet of, on the second day at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? And it shall be performed, even to the half of the kingdom. Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bombing and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. Right? So listen, he said, she, look, so it's the banquet time. They all there. The king feeling good. So he, he raided a big trick again. Just like, you know, that's just what the king do. He's like. Baby, baby, baby. You know what I'm saying? It's a good night. You did well. Nice. This thing is nicely decorated here. Me and my boy Heyman. Man, what you? You know what I'm saying? What can I do for you? You know what I'm talking about? What you want from? What you want from daddy? You know what I'm saying? What you? What, what's going on? Right? Then she responds. She looking like, well, listen. If you are gonna give me some, give me my life. You gotta imagine the king looking there like, dang. You know what I'm saying? Like what? I thought this was the freak off. What you? You know what I'm Why you getting all? You know what I'm saying? Why are you getting all, all depressed and stuff? And give me the life of my people. Like, what? So remember, he don't know that she a Hebrew. Don't Haman don't know that, and, and he don't know that. So what the life of your people. So I imagine that the king just sitting there like, okay, buzz kill. You know what I'm saying? Like, turn off. You know what I'm saying? Then she kept going. He was like, you know what I'm saying? You didn't gave me and my people over to the enemy for us to be killed. He is like, now listen, I wouldn't even say nothing if you said we had to be their servants, if you made us their slaves. Had that been the case, I'd have kept my mouth shut. But you've given us over to be killed. Let's see what the king responded with. Then the king Ahasuerus answered and said unto Esther the queen, who is he and where is he that does presume in his heart to do so? And Esther right? said... Now, do the king not know this? <laughs> Right? The king doesn't know. He's looking like, he's looking like, what are you? Because remember, he doesn't know who she is. He don't know where she's from. He don't know her lineage. 
So he's looking like, what? Who, what? Who trying to, who trying to mess with my baby? Just name him. We going to, hey, Heyman, get the, we about to get the boy. Who was it? Right? Because he looking like we were supposed to come here and have a freak off. Now you telling me somebody trying to get, I'm the king. You trying to mess with my woman? He flipping out in there. So he like, who is it? Right? Then watch this. And Esther said, the adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. And Haman right. She pointed to the homie. <laughs> she, said, she, said, she said, oh, yeah, the one who did it. is this?" Because imagine Haman's in there, too. He's looking like he probably got his sword right now. Like, just tell me who it is. You know I'll take care of it. Because Haman, that guy, like, I'm here for, I like to believe, I'm here for security. You know what I'm saying? So what you mean, somebody? King, just give me the word. Who is it? Who you want me to get? Amy just sitting there, and all of a sudden, she but the adversary, this man right here, that's him. Right? How do you think Heyman feels in that moment? You got to be scared poopless. You see that, you see that the king is sitting here wowing out, foaming at the mouth, like, who trying to mess with my baby? Heyman, do you know? Oh, man, I don't know nothing about none of that. You know what I'm saying? Who is it? Who is it, Esther? You know what I'm saying? Then he go, don't talk to my wife. Esther, who is it? He pointing, you know what I'm saying? That guy right there. Heyman probably pooped on his darn self. You know what I'm saying? He looking like, what? You're a Hebrew? You got to be freaking kidding me. What are the freaking chances, right? He just looking like this whole day went from great to the worst day possible. Right? Watch this. And then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. And the mm -hmm. king arising from the banquet of wine and his wrath went into the palace garden. And Haman stood up to make requests for his life to Esther the queen. For he saw right? So queen. Haman, look, y'all got to picture it because if you picture it, man, it's crazy. So Haman... He, it say he stood up, so he must have been sitting down, right? So Haman's sitting down, all this stuff. He chilling. He waiting for the freak off to start, in my mind. That ain't what the book say. In my mind, though, he waiting for the freak off to start. And then he like, okay, let's get past all this depressing talk. You know what I'm saying? So who killed him? We'll take care of it after this. You know what I'm saying? She point him out, and he looking like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know what I'm saying? So he get up to explain this stuff. And so imagine, like, he got his hands out or something like that. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. So look, 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 look. Look, no, no, no. It's not what you think. This he trying to explain himself. Then what? Then watch what the king do. And the king arising from his banquet of wine and his wrath went into the palace garden. And Haman stood up to make request for his life to Esther the queen, for he saw that. So the king go outside to think, right? So the king little because you for the king it's like I'm about to kill whoever this is, right? She point to my man's though. So that's too much for the king to process in that moment. He's looking like, I got to choose between the bros, you know what I'm saying? And my queen? Like, oh, man. So he go outside like, man, I can't believe it. So he go outside, right? He, Haman might have lived, right? Haman might have made it through this eye. I feel like the king is a bros before them type of guy. Right? But watch what the king perceived. Watch this thing. And the king, re and the king returned. For he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine. And Haman was falling upon the bed whereof Esther was. <laughs> right? So king. look, he probably chasing Esther around the room like, no, 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 please, please, no, listen, hear me out. Esther like, no, I don't want to hear it. I can't believe you. You was about to try to kill all my people. Esther backing up. And then Esther probably back up to the bed, right? Because they in the freak-off room, right? So they, in my mind, right? So they, boom, he back off to the bed like this and lay, laying on the bed. And then, and then he fall onto the bed, like, because he's frantic. He losing his mind. I'm about to lose all, everything, including my darn life. So he fall onto the bed. The king happened to be walking back into the room. He was like, you about to touch my one. He's flipping out now. So watch this. 
Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet and wine of wine. And Haman was fallen upon the bed whereof Esther was. Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in this house? As the you about to take her down in front of me? Face. He said, You about to try to force my wife in front of me? After all it, are you kidding me? You know what I'm saying? It's over. That's what put the nail in the coffin. That's what sealed the darn deal. Right? Because the king already in a messed up mindset. I'm about to kill whoever did this to my wife. What is my brother? This is my man's? You know what I'm saying? Like, I just promoted my man's. I actually like this dude. You know what I'm saying? Okay, hold on. I need some time to think. I go out. What's going on? What you over here doing? No, King, that ain't what I'm trying to do. What, boy? So now it's just like, who you talking to? You know, you know, I think it just escalate. You know what I'm saying? Think, that thing just escalate. Like, who you calling? No, I'm not calling you nothing. What? Hey, somebody come get this boy. You know what I'm saying? Watch this thing. Keep going. As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. Boom. Put a bag over his face. Because he told him, somebody come get him. That's it. He's done. They put a bag over that boy's face. Bow. Think of like the mafia movies. You know what I'm saying? Boom, they covered his face, put a bag over that boy's face, and go. What else happened? And Harbona, one of the chamberlains, said to the king, Behold, also, the gallows, 50 cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who had spoken good for the king, stands in the house of Haman. Then the right? King said, so now the people are turning against Haman. They look and they telling the king, like, yo, he, got, he made some gallows out there. He is about to come ask you to ha hang Mordecai on that thing. Mordecai did good by you. That's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? We can put him on. All I know is we just we just celebrated Mordecai. I can't remember the last time we celebrated Haman. That's, that's just me, King. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you want to do, though, I'll, I'll support it. Right? Watch this. Then the king said, hang him thereon. So the king hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. Right? After that, the king was like, all right. All right, that was a lot. You know what I'm saying? It's a, not the way that I expected to spend this evening. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that was a lot. You know what I'm saying? So then watch what happened after this. On that day did the king Ahasuerus give the house of Haman, the Jews' enemy, unto Esther, the queen. The Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told what he was unto her. And the king took off his ring. So now what that's saying is Esther went to the king, was like, listen, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Mordecai just ain't some guy. This is like, it's like a pops to me, like an older brother to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is like, like, he's my everything. You know what I mean? Like, he means a lot to me. So after that, the king is like, well, he's an honorable guy. He looked at in his mind, right? He, he looked out for me. He saved my he's life. the reason I didn't get killed. Haman, who I thought, you know what I'm saying, was my man. He tried to rape my girl in front of me. And he tried to kill my girl and kill all the people. Like, in his mind, I don't know if Haman was plotting on this the whole time. You know what I'm saying? So he looking like, man, I can't believe this. I felt betrayed by my man. You know what I'm saying? Mordecai, you trust him? Well, baby, I trust you. So now Mordecai is my man. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of how he's looking at it. Watch this. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. And Esther spake yet again before the king and fell down at his feet and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman the Agagite and his device that he had devised against the Jews. Then the mm -hmm. king held out the golden scepter toward Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king and said, if it pleased the king and if I have found favor in his sight and the, and the thing seemed right before the king and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, son of Hamadatha the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews, which are in the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? And the king of Hazar said unto Esther the queen and to Mordecai the Jew, behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman and him that have hanged upon the gallows because he laid his hand upon the Jew. Write ye also for the Jews that it is like of you in the king's name and seal it with the king's ring for the writing which is written the king's name and sealed with the king's ring made no man reverse then were the king's scribe called at that time in the third month that is the month sivan on the three and twentieth day thereof and it was written according to all that 
For God commanded unto the Jews and to the lieutenants and the deputies and the rulers of the provinces, which are from India to Ethiopia, 127 provinces unto every province according to the writing thereof and unto every people after their language and to the Jews according to their writing and according to their language. And he wrote in the king Ahasuerus's name and sealed it with the king's ring and sent letters by post by horseback and riders on mules and camels and young dromedaries. And wherein the king granted the Jews which were in every city to gather themselves together and to stand for their life, to destroy and to slay and to cause to perish all the power of the people and province that would assault them, both little ones and women, to take the spoil of them for a prey. Upon one day in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, namely upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Dar, a copy of the writing for the commandment to be given in every province was published unto all the people that the Jews should be ready against the day to avenge themselves on their enemies. So the post that rode upon the mules and camels went out being hastened and pressed on by the king's commandment and the decree was given in Shushan, the palace. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue, white, and great crown of gold, and with garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. And the Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. And in every province and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness and feast a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. All right. So... You what what ended up happening there is the king sent out a letter saying that so you can't really reverse what he originally said. So instead, what he did, he added to it. He said, OK, well, now the people of Judah can fight back and I'm going to support them in fighting back. So now he said, y'all can kill anybody who, who who wanted to avenge you. You can kill them. So you got to imagine kind of leading up to everything. These boys were probably celebrating. Like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to take out these Jews. So people know. You know what I'm saying? People know who they were. So now he's like, oh, okay, well, now you can recompense it. You can get them back. And I personally am going to support, you know what I'm saying, the people of Judah who fight back. So one day, this the 13th month of Adar, you know what I'm saying, is about to be a war between the people who, you know what I'm saying, want, want the people of Judah dead and the people of Judah. The, problem, the difference now, though, is everybody knows that the king's wife is a Hebrew now. And everybody know that the king is back in the Hebrews. So now it's not even a huge incentive. Don't nobody even want to fight. So people are trying to switch up now. You know what I'm saying? People are trying to join the other side. Like, no, nah, man, I, that wasn't even me. Keep going, though. Watch this. Now the 12th month, that is in the month of Dar, on the 13th day of the same, when the king's commandment and the decree drew near to be put in execution in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, Though it was turned to the contrary that the Jews had rule over them that hated them, Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the provinces of the king of Hazarus to lay hand on such as sought, such as sought their hurt, and no man could withstand them, for the fear mm -hmm. of them fell upon all the people. And all the rulers of the provinces and lieutenants and deputies and officers of the king helped the Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. For Mordecai was great in the king's house, and his fame went out throughout all the provinces, but this man Mordecai waxed greater and greater. Thus the Jews smote all their enemies with the stroke of the sword and slaughter and destruction and did what they would do and did what they would unto those that hated them. But what else? And in Shushan, the palace, the Jews slew and destroyed 500 men and Pershadantha and Dalphon and As, As, Aspatha and Portha and Adelia and Aridatha and Parmusta and Arisai and Aridai and Bejesta, the ten sons of Haman, the son of Hamedatha, the enemy of the Jews, slew they, but on the but on the spoil laid they not their hand. On that day, the number of those that were slain in Shushan the palace was brought before the king. The king said unto Esther the queen, The Jews have slain and destroyed five hundred men in Shushan the palace, and the ten sons of Haman that they had that they done in the rest of the king's provinces. Now, what is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee of what is thy request further, and it shall be done. Then Esther, if it pleased, then said Esther, if it pleased the king, let it be granted to the Jews, which are in Shushan, to do tomorrow, according unto this day decree, and let Haman's ten sons be hanged on the gallows. The king commanded it so to be done, and the decree was given at Shushan that they hanged Haman's ten sons. For the Jews that were in Shushan gathered themselves together on the fourteenth day, 
also the mother of Ar, and slew 300 men at Shushan. But on the prey, they laid not their hand. But the other Jews, on the what? King, but on the prey, they laid not their hand. So remember, the king said they were authorized to take whatever the people that they kill, they can take it from them. They can they can take whatever they have, which, which is what the book calls prey or uh, spoil. So not praying as in talking to God, but pray as in like a um, like an animal that preys on another animal. You know what I'm saying? It's basically saying that I can take what you what I what I won from the battle. So if an animal, if an animal, if a if a bird come kill and kill a rat, you know what I'm saying? It can eat the rat. It can take whatever the rat had and eat it. You know what I'm saying? So in the same way, when we go to war, we can we can kill somebody or kill a nation or take over their nation, and we can take whatever they had. We can take their cattle, take their money, take whatever. So he gave us authorization to take whatever they had. You know what I'm saying? Whatever they had, y'all can take it. It's y'all's now. But we didn't take nothing. Right? We killed the people, and our people didn't take nothing. Keep going. Watch this. But the other Jews that were in the king's provinces gathered themselves together and stood for their lives and had rest from their enemies and slew of their foes 75,000, but laid not their hands on the prey. On the right? They laid not their hands on the spoil. So they didn't take nothing. Right, keep going. On the thirteenth day of the month of Adar, on the fourteenth day of the same rested day, and made a it made it a day of feasting and gladness. For the Jews that were at Shushan assembled together on the thirteenth day thereof, and on the fourteenth day thereof, and on the fifteenth day of the same they rested, and it made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore, so what it's saying is the war went down on the thirteenth; it carried over into the fourteenth, right? And then on the fifteenth they rested. Because they were tired because they were fighting, right? They was fighting for a part of one day and then part the a small part of the next day. And so they was tired. So everybody just like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like you can imagine these people ain't like fresh out of war, you know what I'm saying, or nothing like that. A lot of these people were probably regular people, but they had to go out and fight. Right? They had to go out and fight for their life. They had to go out and kill these people. So then they tired the next day. It's like playing two days of an all-day bar basketball tournament or a football tournament. They tired, sore the next day. So the, the 15th day, 13th day with the, with the official war, a little bit spilled over into the 14th day. And then the 15th day was like a rest for them, a day of rest, almost like a Sabbath where they just kind of took it easy, right? So that's how we end up getting the two days of Purim, right? What actually was going to happen to us was going to happen on the 13th day of Adar. We celebrated Purim on the 14th day of Adar and the 15th day of the, uh, Adar. It's two days, right? And that's what Mordecai uh, tell us a little bit further down. That's how the the, the holiday Purim, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the point in time Purim, that's how that came into, came into play. That's what it's about. It's to memorialize the events that we just read about, right? So after this, Mordecai ends up becoming, you know what I'm saying, one of the kings, you know what I'm saying, right-hand men. So you have Esther as the, as the queen, you got Mordecai as the king's right hand man, and you know things things kind of work out. So now the part that I don't know is did this happen before what we read in Ezra or not? But it would make sense if it happened before what we read in Ezra, because remember there was a king Ahasuerus that wrote the letter that was like, "Nah, y'all can build, and I support them, and I'm gonna give them this, and I'm gonna give them that," and that's probably because Mordecai and Esther is next to him. You know what I'm saying? But we don't know for sure. It's hard to figure out. It can go kind of either it way. Make sense that it was before because like uh it seems like we still like in captivity in Esther's time. You know, in yeah. Esther's day, it was like we all went back home. So it would make sense if it was before we got cracking in our land. Well, Ezra didn't have all of us going back. It was just a it was just a, a few of us, you know what I'm saying, from different mostly the priests and then a few people from different tribes. But you know what I'm saying, but still. Yeah, you would think, like, you know what I'm saying, people would be fighting to get back. People like Mordecai especially, right? So I kind of feel like it happened before, but it's it's hard to it's hard to tell for sure. But any questions? Any questions on the book of Esther? Questions in the chat? Mm.
I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. All right, then we're going to um, we go ahead and go ahead and pray out. We'll talk tomorrow on the fellowship call for all who join. Um, yeah, let's pray out. <clears throat>